Hi, I'm Will. Hi, I'm Brennan. We're Grim Slippers, and we're here on OCML's Artist Spotlight. So my mother, she was actually a singer um, throughout her life, and my family is very musical as well. Um, we grew up, uh, my younger brother and I, we uh, used to sing in the car with my mom all the time, singing a lot of soul and R&B, like uh, Aretha Franklin and uh, Marvin Gaye, and that was really fun. And I never, uh, didn't do really uh, any structured music until I got into high school, I did choir. I picked up the guitar when I was 13, and uh, I just had a affinity for rock and roll, so. I got the music because it's, uh, it's not really a great time to be a scientist in this country right now, so I had to kind of abandon. I went to school for four years to get a tech degree, but that's useless now. Um, we started playing in a band when we were about 12 or 13 years old. We just kind of jammed. Um, Jimi Hendrix and Door songs in my dad's garage. Good times. And yeah, those were the those were the most fun times that we've ever had. And so I'm very happy to be pursuing a lot more of those um, with my best friends. Well, I started out as a singer. Um, it was just kind of natural because my family's a, we sing a lot and you know the car rides and whatnot. But um, around t like 11, 12, I started getting to rock and roll, and I just loved you know hearing guitar solos from Jimi Hendrix, Jimmy Page. Many other great guitarists in rock and roll. I started playing guitar actually um, when I was in about the seventh grade. It was a year before I met Will. And within like two months of him picking up the guitar in eighth grade, he was already better than me, so I had to switch instruments. Um, but I was also playing in the school drum line at the time and really enjoyed percussion. And so I decided to kind of uh, teach myself the drum set so hopefully I could find a place in the band that, uh, that we were starting to play. There aren't very many mainstream artists that are around now that I draw inspiration from. Uh, probably the biggest would be Red Hot Chili Peppers. Other than that, we listen to a lot of bands that um, probably don't get as much recognition as they should, but they have a huge influence on us and uh, we'll start influencing this whole generation of musicians, I, I imagine. Um, one of them is called Moon Hooch, and they're a, uh, they're a combination of jazz and, and house music that's just um, the most like inspirational and exciting show I've ever seen live. Um, another band called Hiatus Coyote, they're kind of uh, self-described as polyrhythmic gangster shit. Uh, and kind of a neo soul sort of vibe. Shit. So we listen, we like to draw inspiration. <laughs> we draw inspiration from anywhere and everywhere, and I think that's kind of what makes us unique. Is we'll listen to. We're not one of those people who says, you know, oh I like everything, but oh just not country. <laughs> if you find us a good country song and we're inspired by it, odds are like you'll get a country riff at some point in the in the future on one of our tracks. So. This guy uh, wrote a book about a branch of the Air Force that works in underground silos, uh, maintaining all of our nuclear arms and running drills in the case that we have to launch these monstrosities. Um, but in, uh, when he was talking to the uh, interview, interviewer on NPR, he was talking about how the people who work down in the silos can wear comfortable clothing, such as pajamas. And so I got this image in my head and I was describing it to Brennan how, you know, these people you know, that launch the nukes that can destroy the entire world, uh, they're sitting back watching the world go to shit in their pajamas. Um, bunny slippers, just you know, chilling, uh, and that's kind of, uh, kind of mirrors actually our music, which is kind of a juxtaposition, a juxtaposition between light and dark. Because we're pretty cynical guys ourselves, but our music can be very, you know, dancey and positive. Um, so yeah, that's where grim slippers comes from. You know, it's kind of a juxtaposition between the grim things in life and you know things we celebrate, things that are not so um, serious, more the fuzzy. The fuzzy side of life. One of us will like, will come up with a riff, it'll be very short, just sometimes it won't even be a full riff, it's like a couple notes, and that person gets so excited that they won't refine it at all, they'll just bring it to the group immediately, and somebody else, or even that same person will be so inspired by what we start creating in the moment that, um, yeah, we go off on lots of little jams, and we record a lot of what we do so that we can play it back and be like, oh, what the fuck was that that you just, I need that, I need more of that in my life. <laughs> And narrow down um, to you know figure out the set structure of the of the song. And we all sometimes write parts for each other. Uh, I mean, I, I write lyrics. I write. I love to write little um, bits on guitar, and then he'll take them and make them into something that's just incredible. I couldn't have, have even envisioned, and you know, vice versa. Yeah, it, um, you know, being friends for so long and jamming, we have this kind of a telepathy, you know, about our playing together. We. We love the same music and we love playing the same types of music as well. So um, whenever we're jamming freestyle, it's kind of the our you know 
subconscious just kind of takes over and we know where we want to go as a group uh, at all times and it's, it's really fun just kind of letting it take us to different places. Playing music and trying to make a living doing it. I, it's, we love being on stage and uh, you know sharing the energy that um, that we you know take from music itself and the, that you know crowd feedback loop that you get when you're on stage performing live and you're making people you know forget about their problems and they're uh, and letting the, just letting go of the inhibitions. It's the most uh, it's the best high I've ever had and uh, it's really something special. I, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> Sustainability, maybe. We just want to keep making music. Uh, and if we can... And on Earth, too. Yeah, that's true. Kind of mirrors. About yeah. every sense. But if we, can, if we can make enough where we can keep doing this um, all the time and make this our profession where, you know, music is the majority of what we think about, um, then that's the way I think to, to be the happiest in this life. It's going great. It's going to be massive and huge and tremendous. Um, <laughs> It's got inspiration from a lot, a lot of different places. In fact, uh, what are we calling it again? Um, we're gonna. It's entitled "Everything and Nothing at Once." Yeah. So I think that really sums up, um, without hopefully giving too much away, of uh, what this album is gonna be like. And we're planning on releasing it in the late, uh, late spring to early summer, so end of May, to June. And as for the idea, "Everything and Nothing at Once," um, we last year we uh, made it short little four song EP and we had it reviewed by this uh, little blog online and uh, the reviewer, uh, well, she was an alright review but um, she was talking about how our, our sound was like everything, was trying to be everything and nothing at once and we, we couldn't agree more. I think she meant it in more of a uh, not so good way but we took it in the best way possible because uh, we have so many different influences, you know, from rock, blues, jazz, dance, EM. Yeah, you know. That's true. And she kind of had a good point. Like on our on our EP, we really only showed our like we only showed that we can play like rock, electronic music, yeah, such a small, and blues. It was like a, a snapshot of what of are really our full sound. We're gonna like. give you the pie. We're gonna give you the pie. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing is, you know, play with everybody and ev anybody and everybody you can um, to just get a feel for playing with others and. What it really entails to you know make make a song with you know collaborators. We all have ideas in our head how we want the song to be, but you know when you compare that to someone else's, um, that you know might be going in a whole different direction. It can be very hard at times to try to settle on what kind of sound you, you want in a song or you know, different parts and different pieces. Uh, and you know once the more people you jam with, a the more practice you get, the better you get, and uh, you can see what you can work with, like how much you're willing to give and take in terms of uh, the writing creative process. Yeah, you gotta know how much shit you can take. But <laughs> no, seriously, like really, if you if you want to make a band, you have to do all that first if you want to be a musician. If you want to make a band, I think, and try and like and try and work with people professionally who are maybe your friends, maybe people you met in music school, maybe maybe people you met elsewhere. If you really want to pursue it uh, to the best of your abilities, you have to know yourself. Uh, or at least be willing to get to know yourself on a very, very deep level, um, because it, it'll it'll teach it'll you. It'll expose what, you to yeah, exactly. You're to very, people. very raw and yeah. very open, and sometimes it'll teach uh, teach others things about you. But a lot of time, it's teaching uh, uh, you about yourself. So you gotta be ready for that. Ready to face your demons. You might suck. Semen. <laughs> you I mean, might demons, you might not uh, like yourself. You gotta be okay to yeah. deal with that. We're Grim Slippers, and you can find our music at GrimSlippers.com. 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 100 years. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Grimslippers.com. Grimslippers.